Well, night one, sleeping in a tent with the dog. That did not go well. <laughs> I think my watch tells me four hours sleep. It wasn't this messy when I went to sleep. It's this messy because Bill has just moved from pillar to post all night long and then shivered wherever he's gone. So he's very, very warm. I've got his little jacket and he liked it. And then he's gone and got up and wiggled off out of the warm spot I make him. And now he's fast asleep. And I feel like death. So tired. Um, haven't slept properly for a long time. Last night was the icing on the cake. Let's see though what the scenes are like outside this um, beautiful tent in this lovely spot. Mum's with me today and we are in Lana and we're heading up a sign that says, a footpath with a sign that says, there she goes, there she goes, mother's going. This permissive path is dangerous. It's used at your own risk. How dangerous does it look, mother? Yeah, really, dangerous. Really, really dangerous. It might be, it might be mine shafts. And that is dangerous. Mum's come for the day. We are hiking. Oh my God, this is nothing. I was going to say it's a bear and see if you said <laughs> you agreed. Um, so behind, Actually, above, it, is a bear. <laughs> it looks like it was a bear at my periphery. Um, behind is Khan Marth, where I stayed last night. And we've come down through the valley and up the other side. And now we're heading towards Stidians. Sorry, I didn't mean to poke you in the face. <laughs> um, you walked these before, haven't you, Mum? What did you think of my breakfast, Mum? Porridge in a bag. Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, off we go. Pathway today. So I'm learning that this is a mineral tramway. Really lovely signs that have been put up. And what I didn't know is that this road originally was a Roman pathway linking St. Michael's Mount, a pilgrimage pathway, and there was a religious settlement in St. Day called Garland. I had no idea that this um, this little tramway was here and I live super close so it just tells us there's so many things around on our doorsteps that are yet to still be discovered so it's not like a, a wild footpath this morning but it's a, a historical trail moving uh, all of the mineral dug out of the ground, the tin, the ore, the copper to where it would be um, dealt with. So they take it to where they would uh, purify it so the tin had arsenic in it, obviously deathly. So they would take it, refine it, make a cleaner product, and then be able to move it on and sell it. Trade, see? These footpaths are trade routes. And that's why these little mining communities exist, because of the ore in the ground, and then other communities built up around the processing and the movement of it. I think I'll dig deeper and do a little bit of extra info share. If you're interested, I mean, if you're not interested, mm, click on the next video, maybe. <laughs> so this is the old railway line. This is the, did you hear on the, I said from the, information sign that this is a pilgrimage route from St. Michael's Mount to a religious community on St. Day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was a Roman route. Did you take a picture of it? Yes. Okay, well, can you record that for me? I will. After you. So it's blocking access to a public right of way. Yeah. Making it difficult. Yes. I guess people might just go out on the road and use the lane across, but it's definitely a, a footpath. It's on OS, green lined, and has styles. Well navigated, Mama. Mm -hmm. Bit overgrown, pretty cool. Try and get under the 
branches without <laughs> getting the umbrella stuck. Always getting the umbrella stuck. Oh, Christ. Right. <laughs> Good. Oh, more hobbit, hobbity, hobbity things. Oh. <laughs> yes. Often walking up the side of the field is a good place to go. When you're using the footpath, I mean, it's kind of obvious maybe, but people sometimes go across diagonally in the middle. I mean, if that's the right route, then great. But if not, then often going through the middle can disrupt crops if it's been sown or things are growing. Um, kind of best practice growing up here to know that you walk around the edges of a field rather than in the middle. And if that's me telling you things that you obviously already know, then sorry. But I figure if you don't know, then how do you know? Um, it's the kind of thing that also people feel weird about saying to other people when we're adults. Like, it feels patronising or parenting to say, oh, don't walk in the middle of the field or close the gate behind you so people don't say it. I definitely would say the gate thing these days to people. Closing the gate is so important. Um, yeah, let's see. Where's next? The footpath is supposed to go from here, across there, and then out. <laughs> Mum, be careful. That's footpath. Mum's doing yoga to get through it. And it's electric, and it just electrocuted me. Okay, crawl under here without touching it now. There's the electric line. Literally on the floor to get underneath <laughs> the electric fence that's gone over the footpath. Oh. And another one here. Hold on. Oh, no. Yeah. You see, they might cover the other bit too. Okay. <sighs> Done. The lady in the house was not that chuffed that I used the corner of her garden, which has all got a proper footpath gate in it. But I think they'd clearly made a reasonable effort to not make that very accessible footpath, or at least not to be, it wasn't used very often, so I think they're surprised. To see someone come through the corner of their garden out the window didn't look too happy about it. Well, right to Rome. Same deal, footpath pointing this way, but I think it goes through the yard. Let's check. How much did it go? Um, up, up. Good mum, well done. Okay. So, the footpath, clear, but with an electric fence over it. it. Feels a bit intimidating to be walking through someone's farmyard. Well, also, just feels a bit naughty, like you shouldn't be here. Someone's livelihood. Farmers works very hard. Oh, he's feeding up the feed trolley. Okay. So the footpath did point through here, but it's not entirely clear then once you're in where it goes. No cows, plenty of evidence of cows. It's like being a little kid again. That bit's for path down here. So we're having to cut under more electric fences. I understand why farmers would do this. I do, but I mean, this makes this hard going. That's a bit swampy. We can't get across. So mum's got the great idea of going under the fence here, up the animal run and across the top of the hedge. Is it possible? Mm, maybe, just not be. It totally grabbed my umbrella out of my back. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mary Poppins. <laughs> so annoying. On OS maps, that's a proper footpath through there. Now we can't get out of the field because it's all barbed wire, electric fence, metal railings. This is Stithian's Lake, not far from where I grew up, really. Um, lovely pub here called the Golden Lion in Stithian's. And this is the windiest 
inland water in the southwest. So lots of people come here for windsurfing, foiling. Uh, it's a great spot. And Wild Vibes have a cafe here. So we're having a cup of tea and coffee. So uh, Fitness Wild is where I train and have trained for ages at Argyle Reservoir. Uh, ben and Jimmy set it up. I train with Josh. They're amazing, Fitness Wild. But they partnered with a lovely couple who have a cafe. Um, and so here at Stidians, they have a version of it called Wild Vibes, a mix of the cafe's name and uh, Fitness Wild. So oh, it's Good Vibes Cafe, that's it. Good Vibes Cafe in Falmouth and Fitness Wild made Wild Vibes. Looking forward to a cup of tea. So is mum. Mum loves tea. Mum's gone for it. Gunning, gunning for the tea. Windiest inland, southwest. Absolutely no wind. Cornish hedgerow, such a skilled profession. Potentially dying out, as lots of traditions are. But so gorgeous to see it done so nicely. Oh, got a tractor incoming. You got tractors coming each way. Probably a Tractor. Tractor. <laughs> Lovely bit of farm life. So nice to see people working in the countryside like that. You don't see it when I drive around. Never get to like smile and wave. The people grafting in the fields. Um, and all the cows, of course. It's all about the cows. Hello, beautiful. We had a few little non-starters uh, where we couldn't find a route across this area, which is rain common. And then we found a well-trodden pathway, a couple down from the ones we tried, which had overgrown. So obviously common land, um, I'm thinking back in the day, medieval times, common land would be where all of the surrounding inhabitants were able to graze their animals. Free, open use land for everybody. Um, now very overgrown, cattle would have a job. But yeah, just I enjoy trying to figure out how, where we're walking now, ties with the past and what might have been happening here. And then I look around and look at the new build houses, but also the older granite cottages um, and maybe older, larger houses that might have run these fields way back in the day. So you can either go down there or here to the road. Pew. Don't want to do any more road walking, done quite a lot. I'm not sure that's true on the map. It started to rain, which is fine. Mum's legend, soldiering with no umbrella. So we've just been through the, just been through the weirdest area and it's really quite close to where I grew up and my parents still live, but it's a lane or a little road I've never really been up. Um, it's a lot of junk. Um, a few caravans, nothing wrong with caravans, I live in a caravan. Very, very poorly treated dogs in runs full of poo. That's all they've got is like a tiny chicken run each and a segmented shed with like a wire run each. And that little run, wooden run, 
about a meter and a half long in front of them and the width of your fingertip to your elbow. It's just full of slimy piles of shit. Oh, poor dogs, four of them. It's like nearly made me vomit and cry. But I was too scared to, it was a very intimidating place to walk past. So there's not really much to do about that. I'm thinking about who I can, yeah, what can be done. And then there's some really strange, scary, so I keep out signs and that and they're not necessarily private land, but saying that they are not on the maps, they're not. Feels a bit eerie, which is quite a surprise. I didn't expect that to be something I would feel or see. Mum agreed. She's like, oh, it's all a bit, feels a bit strange. Um, but we are crossing fields to find footpaths because again, others have been chained off um, routes. So a longer route again home, but get time to spend with my mama and we're adventuring together, which is brilliant. And did you know, sometimes footpaths go along the top of hedges like this. So drop to the field down there and there, and the footpath is along the top. <laughs> 